Good morning. First of all, how many people here are AMSAT members? So we got a fair number here. And welcome to the forum for today. Um, I'm going to race through my presentation. Joe has got a, a, a shepherd's crook, and he's supposed to grab my neck if I go over my 15 minutes. So I want to go through um, uh, a couple of things, talk about our relationships and how they're important to AMSAT, talk about strategic planning, talk about the organizational structure. Can we please give him a mic so we can see the screen back here? Okay, Joe will do that um, and, and go on from there. So first of all, in terms of the AMSAT board, uh, we have two sets of board members, those that are elected in, in the odd year and those that are elected in the even year. I remind the AMSAT members that uh, board nominations are due by the 15th of June um, and that the election uh, results will, or the election, election ballot will be mailed out by the 15th of July. So if you're interested in running for the board, you want to help us make a difference in terms of strategic planning and the strategic outlook for the organization, um, please consider uh, running for the board. Uh, we have four members that are up for re-election this year, the class of 2017. Um, and we're looking for people to, to run for this year's board. Also, uh, if there are more, board, more nominees than, uh, than, than the four slots, then the, uh, the fifth and sixth uh, level uh, vote receivers will become the alternates for, uh, uh, for this coming year. So as again, the 15th is the due date for getting your nominations in. And Hamvents is a great opportunity to collect, uh, collect uh, signatures for your, for your nomination. Let's see if I can figure out how to work this. In terms of our senior leadership team, it's pretty much been the same over the last couple of years uh, with, uh, with the folks that are listed here. And of course, you'll be hearing from Jerry and from Drew, um, and Tim will be representing Frank, and of course, you'll be hearing from, uh, from me. In terms of who, well, who we are and what we do, I want to summarize it. We say this every year. Our purpose in life, if you will, is to keep amateur radio in space. So I want to talk about a partnership. So I've listed here in terms of the FOX program, um, the status of, of some of our, of our programs here. What I want you to focus on is look at the relationships we've established that allow these things to be flown. It's the university partnership that provides the justification for NASA to underwrite our launches of those uh, CubeSats that are flying under the Alana program. So the FOX 1A, which became AO85, was an Alana. FOX 1 Bravo, uh, which is Red FX Sat 1, is flying under Alana. Um, and uh, the Fo uh, Red Set Fox Red Set X FX2 will be also on Alana, but we're also paying for two launches, and that's noted here with uh, Fox One Charlie and Fox One Delta. So these are the dates we've got so far in terms of uh, the launch opportunities. We're looking for later this year, early in the in the 2018, and Jerry will talk about that. But I want to bring up something new, something a little bit different that you have not heard about. So as I say, please, w but wait, there's more. So step back for a second to back to 2007, the Air Force Academy launched Falcon Sat 3, uh, which was uh, developed by them for their purposes, um, doing some science, doing some training of cadets in engineering and satellite operations and the like. Uh, after 10 years of service, uh, this satellite's been declared surplus by the Air Force Academy. They're moving on to bigger and better things. So here's this orbiting satellite that still has functionality. And so the Air Force Academy approached us in terms of wondering if perhaps we'd be willing to take on the uh, operation of that satellite because it is, it is configured for the amateur uh, radio frequencies to make it into an amateur radio satellite. So we've been working with them since March to come up with an agreement that will allow us to, to assume operational access um, to be able to manage the satellite in orbit. Uh, the draft agreement has been completed and it's being finalized as we speak. So once that agreement is signed between the two organizations and it's official, we will be announcing the operational uh, uh, details for using this satellite. Um, we're also going to be putting information in the journal about Falcon Set 3 in general because people may not be familiar with it. Um, but this is wonderful news because it provides us with an additional amateur radio asset in orbit. And I think it's a, a, a great second life, if you will, for, F, for FS3 to become a communication satellite for amateur radio. Um, but it also uh, is a plus for AMSAT because the Air Force Academy is willing to collaborate with us to extend the life of their satellite and from an operational point of view. So this is wonderful news. One of the things we've talked about uh, over the last seven months is strategic planning. We're at a crossroads for AMSAT right now. 
The last time we did a major strategic planning review was back in 2004. With a little update in 2009, when we made the strategic decision to go ahead and do the FOX program. We held a two-day session in Orlando to, uh, to kick off this, this process. It's not just a weekend, it's a kickoff. So strategic planning is not just one and done. You are, in fact, establishing a process. And we uh, retained a, a facilitator that helped us do this, um, uh, T Tony Silbert from Spartina Consulting. And he helped us look at ourselves not from the traditional strategic planning process of, of SWAT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, but rather from the idea of SOAR, uh, which is uh, strengths, opportunities, aspirations, and results. Look at your positives and figure out what you want to do with your, your best skill sets, if you will, to move forward into the future. So we did a planning weekend, as I indicated. We did the SOAR analysis. Um, we also looked at consensus of key goals and the like. You can see the issues we tried to come up with and, and, and respond to during our, our two-day session and come up with agreement on next steps, which, of course, is a continuing process. So notice I've said engage members, volunteers, partners, and sponsors. It's not just the board that we're going to try to engage in this process. It's also the, the folks that are interested in helping AMSAT move forward. So that means the membership and the people we collaborate with. So four basic areas were identified. Innovation in satellite and products and services, um, membership engagement and communication, operational financial excellence, and partnerships. Partnerships are sort of a combination of the above three, as you can see here. Each area that we've uh, identified as having a need for focus has a team leader associated with it. So I've identified here the, uh, the team leaders that have been uh, uh, volunteered to, uh, to help us with each one of these particular areas. Um, and and we're, going to, we're moving forward in that particular arrangement. Uh, one of the things that we have under operational excellence or financial excellence is uh, revenue generation. How do we bring in capital dollars? How do we bring in money to underwrite uh, not only the day-to-day the -day operation of AMSAT, but doing the projects we want to do? And also succession planning, because clearly the future leadership of AMSAT is an important criteria for determining the future success of AMSAT. So we'll be utilizing the AMSAT website and AMSAT Journal to share information with the AMSAT membership as we move this process along during the coming year. One of the reasons for doing strategic planning, of course, is to assess not only uh, uh, where you want to go, but first you've got to figure out where you are. And I've shown this slide uh, in previous Hamvention presentations of our membership trends. Um, and you'll notice that the numbers have gone down a little bit from 2016. Um, we have gained more life members. The life member number went from 73 to 94. That's 21 new life members in the past year. But generally speaking, our numbers are not good in terms of underwriting the day-to-day -day operations of the, of the organization. If you think about maintaining the lights in Kensington at the office there, um, the operational costs of, of keeping the AMSAT organization going year to year, um, we have always tried to be dependent upon the membership dues to underwrite that. And simply, we don't have enough members right now to say we can fully do that. So what that does, of course, is that um, we have to come up with funding to, to underwrite the shortfall. And that funding will come from general donations that are not specified or specific donations people want to make to help underwrite the day-to-day -day operations of AMSAT. That's not a long-term solution. We have to boost the membership. And we have to find other revenue streams um, to be able to keep our doors open in the long haul. Uh, we're not going out of business tomorrow or next year, um, but a long-term trend of not being able to underwrite the day-to-day -day operation is not a good sign. I um, want to go on and, and mention about the AMSAT Journal because that's the key uh, benefit people typically see when they join up AMSAT. What do they get as a tangible result? And that tangible result is the, uh, is the AMSAT Journal, which is published six times a year. Uh, Joe Kornowski is our editor. He's been editor since January of 16 done a fantastic job, um, excellent uh, uh, production, getting it out on time. I mean, we, you, get it, you get it six times a year, so every other month you want to get the AMSAT Journal, and we're going out on a timely basis. Joe is with us this morning, so Joe, if you would just raise your hand and, and think about it. But, but as we say on the slide here, Joe is continually looking for material, and so he is always seeking input from our members and from others of writing materials. Um, and we're looking for a wide variety of, of ideas and, and article subjects. So if you've done a ham fest, if you've been operating, 
You did something unusual from an operating point of view. Um, you're a newbie, if you want to call yourself that, and you want to explain what you've learned or what, what you've gained over the last year in your satellite operations. We're looking for feature stories. We're, we're looking for human stories. We're looking for anything that we think would be relevant and important um, to share with our membership and with the satellite community in general. AMSAT Journal is the key, is the premier amateur satellite uh, magazine out there right now. And the quality of it is dependent not only upon the editorship that Joe provides, but provide the appropriate input and in articles to, to make that such a stellar magazine. So as I said in the bottom of the slide here, our biggest concern is developing a pool of articles. You can certainly help us with that. In terms of an AMSET membership, you pay down your $44 or higher premium level, and uh, is that it in terms of your support for AMSET? And I would offer that perhaps you need to think about how you can go above and beyond simply paying your dues. So I've listed here some of the things we can, you can, might want to consider helping us with. The key recruiting uh, issue you can help us with because the best way to recruit members is by word of mouth. If you're an AMSAT member, presumably that means you have some familiarity with what we're doing. You have an appreciation for the direction of the organization. You're seeing the results that are being produced by the organization. Share that with others. As people become interested in satellites, um, make the suggestion that maybe they ought to join AMSAT. Not only because it provides them with information for the AMSAT journal, but you're helping to keep the organization going that has made this all possible in getting these Fox satellites, for example, launched. Donate above and beyond your membership. All of our projects require additional funds because clearly the membership dues do not generate the funds necessary to build satellites. So, for example, the Fox 1C, Fox 1D programs, we are paying spaceflight for the launch of those two satellites. We still have an existing campaign going on to underwrite the cost of those two satellites being flown into orbit. So think about if you're interested in the FOX program, maybe supporting the launch program. There's other programs going on that Jerry will talk about. We have the, uh, um, the ground station terminal development going on for five and dime, for example. Uh, we have the AERIS program, of course, which is also uh, in critically important looking for funding. So think about those areas of the activities that AMSAT is engaged with and consider supporting those, those areas um, with your support. Use the existing satellites. We, we recognize that not all AMSAT members are satellite operators, but if you have an interest in operating, please operate. Because one of the things that's important is to show the utilization of those satellites. Because interest generates interest. So if you're a satellite operator, share the news about operating satellites. We have a satellite demo going on this weekend that Paul Stetzer, N8HM, is, is leading for us right outside the door from the AMSAT booth. And they've got a fantastic arrangement set up there, working both the linear and FM satellites. Take the opportunity to check out what they're doing. And particularly if you're not familiar with satellite operations, here's a wonderful opportunity to ask the guys that know best in terms of how to operate properly. Volunteer time and talent. As I said, we're looking for volunteers, not only for strategic planning, but for maintaining the organizational's day-to-day -day tactical operations. So we need areas of, of internet support, uh, development support, engineering, user services. User services including field operations. Those are the ones that help uh, uh, act as ELMERS, represent uh, AMSAT at, at, at uh, Hamvention and other ham fests, giving club presentations, writing up stuff for the local club newsletter, whatever it might be. Think about it in terms of how you might want to support AMSAT. I mean, Joe Spire, I know, is looking for folks uh, to help us with educational relations. And as I said, um, Strategic planning and team participation uh, is an important area now, and I've listed the team leaders here that uh, you might want to approach here this week because the majority of them are here. So Hamvention provides an opportunity to interact with the senior leadership team and our team leaders involved with strategic planning um, and get engaged directly uh, with folks as you, as you have them here. Lastly, I want to bring up uh, the AMSAT Space Symposium. For those of you that missed it, we had a great experience last year at the symposium at sea. It was great because not only people had a great time, they brought their families with them, they brought their significant others with them. It was a family event. People had a wonderful opportunity to interact. And uh, if you saw the AMSAT journal, you saw the pictures of the, uh, the satellite operators with their aero antennas lined up on the, uh, on the deck there of, 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 the, of, the, of the ship, um, I think you would have been very much impressed by, by that. There were a few elks in there, that's correct. Um, this year we're gonna be at Reno. And Reno is an interesting place to go to. Um, 
it's an interesting area from a tourist point of view. It's an interesting area for being able to do activities. So we're hoping that people will consider the Reno uh, venue to be another family-friendly uh, uh, spouse, part, significant partner opportunity to bring besides themselves um, their, their, their families. There is a significant uh, benefit in terms of uh, uh, tourist activities. They got, uh, we got restaurants, we got uh, gaming if you're into that. Um, you can do whatever you want. And the, uh, the Silver Legacy Resort will be our, our venue for this year's symposium. Uh, I've listed the features here. So, and Joe Spire, our educational relations guy, is our, is our chair for this year's symposium. So if you've got questions about it, see Joe, and we do have a booth, uh, at the booth we do have a flyer for symposium. So with that, um, that's the quick overview of some of the key things that we're doing. And now on to the uh, perhaps the more interesting areas of engineering and operations. Thank you.